Yes, it's quick on chapter 14. All right, thank you, man. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so we're going over a binomial distribution. So a binomial distribution is another distribution that we're gonna learn how to find the probability of event occurring. So you do for a binomial distribution is for a discrete data set. So if you remember discrete data, discrete data is where it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. But there's nothing in between. It's impossible for you to get like a 0.5 or a 0.7 or like a 3.1. So when we're talking about binomial distribution, it's purely for discrete data set. So there are some requirements. So the requirements are there for you to be able to identify that a problem is a binomial distribution. So let's go over the requirements. So the first requirement is each trial must have two categories for outcome. So usually we say the outcome is a success or a failure. All right. So say like if I'm, so for this one, I'm going to do an example. So say we're flipping a coin. Flip a coin. Say we flip it 10 times. So for this one, what we're going to say a success is if it land on heads. So we'll say success is equal if the coin land on the head. So that means a failure will be that the coin land on tails. So when we say the outcome, there must be two outcomes. Is it, that's an example of that there has to be two outcomes. So it either gonna land on head or it either gonna land on tail. But those are the only two outcomes that possibly could happen. Any question in regard to that first one? All right, so let's go condition number two. So for condition number two it says experiments must have a fixed number of trials. So they just mean the amount of time that we're gonna do this experiment, the problem should tell you how many times they're gonna do that experiment. So say for that problem that I set up about flipping a coin, how many times did they tell you they're gonna flip a coin? And if you want, you can put it in the chat. Let me get up the chat. So how many times did they tell you they're gonna flip the coin? Cool, 10, thank you, Imani. So we'll say N is equal to 10. So that's what condition number two is saying, that the amount of time we're doing the experiment, it has to be finite. Like they have to tell you how many times they're actually doing the experiment. All right, so let's do condition number three. So for condition number three is saying each trial must be independent of the other. So say like if I flip the coin the first time, second time, and the 10th time, what's the probability for the first flip that the coin will land on heads? 50%. So one half, oops, and one fifth. What about the second time around? What will be the probability that the coin will land on heads the second time I flip it. Yeah, one half. And also the 10th time I flip it, it should also be one half. So that's what we're talking about when we say each trial must be independent of the other. It doesn't matter the first experiment, second experiment, or the 10th experiment. 
all the probabilities should be the same for the probability of success. So if you look at this one, it doesn't matter if the first time, the second time, or the 10th time, the probability that the coin should land on heads is going to be a hundred, well, it's going to be one half or 50%. All right. Um, everybody good with that so far? All right. So let's go to the final condition. So for the final condition, it said probability of success. So probability of success is equal to P, probability of failure. And also just know the variable that we use for probability of failure is Q is equal to one minus P. So say like if I tell you P is equal to 0.20, if I want to find what Q is, all you have to do is just use this formula over here that says one minus P, which is equal to one minus 0.20, which is equal to 0.80. So pretty much with that same P and Q should always add up to one or 100%. Any question in regard to P and Q? All right, sweet. All right, so let's move on to page number two. All right, so for page number two, we're again to 10.3, well, sorry, 14.3. So for 14.3, we're again to the formula of the binomial distribution. So I'm going to go over the binomial distribution, the formula, and then what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and do it with the calculator. All right. So if you look at this, this is combination. So that's the other way of writing a combination. So this is actually, if you remember, N, C, R. The only thing different, instead of R, they replace it with K. So that's what the K is. All right, so for that part, we're gonna use a calculator to get it. And then if you look at the next part, it says P to the K power. So that's the probability of success to the K power. So pretty much what this one doing is saying the probability of success and how many total success do you want? Could K represent how many total success do you want? Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna multiply that by Q and we're gonna take it to the N minus K power. N minus K is telling us how many failures do we want? So this is the binomial distribution. So this is what we're gonna go over right now. So we're gonna do the first problem. So it says, find the probability that X is equal to two if X is a binomial random variable with N equal to six and P equal to 0.3. So for this problem, I already gave you everything. The only thing I didn't give you is Q. So if I know P is equal to 0.3, if I want to find Q, you just want to do one minus P, which is equal to one minus 0.3, which is equal to 0.7. So my Q is equal to 0.7. So if I Q is equal to 0.7. Everybody get how I got Q is equal to 0.7? Hey. All righty. So up next, we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do this portion of the formula. This is a question. Papa. <laughs> All right. No question from the baby. All right. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and find that value from using our class cow. So N 
is equal to, if you look at it, six. And then we're going to say C and our K value, our K value is equal to two. The reason why I know it's two, because if you look right here, it says X equal to two. And if you look right here, it says X is equal to K. So whatever we say X is equal to, that's your K. All right. Everybody good with 6C2? All right. So right now, this is where you're going to need class calc. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and share class calc with you. For that way, you could kind of see how I'm going to enter in class calc. All right. So just remember for class calc, you always want to be in graphing mode if you're doing anything stats related. So let's do this. So first thing you want to do, hit the stats button. And then it should be right here in basic. If you look right here, it says NCR. Don't worry about the R. For us, R is K. So we're going to put first N. N is equal to 6. K is equal to 2. And that's it. Can you repeat where you um where you got that from? Yeah, sure. Here, let me delete it. So first thing you want to do, hit the stats button, and then you click right here where it says NCR, and then you put six, and you put two. All right, everybody, go on. Um, where did the fifteen come from? Right. Also show for the people who have a TI-83 or 84 how to do that. So if you have a TI-83, first you enter your N. So first enter six. Go right here where it says math. Go to PRB. And then click right here where it says NCR. And then you choose two. Press enter and you get 15. All right, let me go over that again. Just in case I went a little bit too fast. So first you hit six, you hit math, you go all the way over here where it says PRB, and then you choose NCR. And then you select two, and you're done. So if you have the class calc, or if you have the TI-83 or 84, you should be able to do that. So everybody good how I got this 15? So if you look, I already have this portion over here. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this next portion over here. So I'm gonna put 15. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna multiply by P. So P, if you look at it, P is 0.3. So you put 0.3. Now you're going to put it to the K power. K, we said, is equal to 2. So you put it to the second power. And then if you look at it, now we want Q. Q, Q we said, was equal to 0.7. Because if you look right here, we got 0.7. And now if you look at it, we have to do N minus K. So you go N, which is six, minus K, which is two. Okay. All right. So we're almost done with the formula. All right. Any questions so far? Um, how I got 15 times 0.3 to the second power times 0.7 to the six minus two. Can you repeat that again? Sorry, you, I, you went too fast. <laughs> All right. Okay. So first thing you want to do is 
You want to put whatever your P is? P is 0.3. Then what you want to do, you want to put whatever K is, which is this one. K, we say K was 2. So you put it to the second power. Then what you want to do, you want to get Q. Q in this case, we said was 0.7. So we put 0.7. And then if you look at this final portion, the n minus k, n minus k, n we said was 6, k was equal to 2, so you do 6 minus 2. Everybody good with that? And so the 15, we just bring it down to what we just did right here on the 6c2, right? Yeah, so oh. the 6c2, we bring it down, because 6c2 is equal to 15. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. So if there's no other question, what we're going to do, we're going to do some math. So if you look right here, it says 6 minus 2. Well, 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. So we're going to say 15 times 0.3 to the second power times 0.7 to the fourth power. All right, so if you look at this, this shit kind of makes sense. Because if you look at, this is the probability of success, and this is how many success I want. This is the probability of failure, and this is how many failures do I want. So it's so, I mean, how many um, success, we, uh, whatever our success is, whatever you put the exponent to is how many success do we want. And then the failure is whatever the probability of failure is, how many failure we have, you put that to that power. So since I want two success, you do 0.3 to the second power. Since I want four failures, that means I do 0.7 to the fourth power. All right. Everybody goes so far on how it got to that last part? Okay, so up next I'm gonna go ahead and do you share my class calc. So we're going to do 15, we're going to do multiplication times 0.3. And then what we want to do, we want to do this to the second power. So if you look right here, you want to use right here where it says x to the second power. And then we want to do multiplication. We're going to do 0.7. And now you want to use the one that say a to the n power. And then you say it's to the fourth power. And if you look, we get that probability. So we get 0 0.3, 2, 4, 1. And that's it for that first problem. Any question for that first problem? Yeah, I didn't see how you did the um the power. Okay. So we we'll do fifteen. Uh, are you talking about the last power, Imani? The point seven to the fourth power. Yeah, like how do I get the like the point three in parentheses and then like yeah the powers on top of them. Okay. I'll All right. So I um you're able to see my keyboard, correct? Yes. All right. Do you see this comma right here? Do you see the comma next to the zero? No. Where? Well, do you see the one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. to the comma. So yeah. if you see the comma, if you look to the left of it, you see how it says a to the n power? Yes. So what you want to do, you want to press 0. 0.7 and then press a to the n power. Oh, it's because it doesn't have it on my phone. Oh. Are you on graphing mode? Yeah. It should have it. Oh, there you go. Okay, I got it. 
Very cool. Yeah, and then put fourth power. All right. So that's our very first problem in regard to the binomial distribution. Any question in regard to that first problem? So for this one, there's actually a function in class calc that will do everything for you. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so let's start all over. So let's go to stats. This time around, what I want you to do, I want you to press distribution slash plot. All right. Everybody that distribution slash plot. Okay. So what I want you to do, I want you to click here where it says binomial distribution. So if you look at it, if you go to binomial distribution right here, we're going to do, it's going to ask you for N and it's going to ask you for P. So for N, if you remember our N was six, our P was 0.3. Everybody good so far with that? So the cool thing about this, it will actually do a little drawing for you over here. So if you actually press zoom, you should get this. So if you actually click on it, or if you actually just scroll over it, you see it has a zero comma point one one eight. So the zero, the zero, is the x value the 0.118 is the probability that corresponds to that x value so this is telling me if x is equal to zero the probability of that occurring is 0.118 let's go on to the next one so if you look at it, it says one comma 0 0.303 so telling me if x is equal to one the probability is 0 0.303 now let's go to the next one, which is the one that we just did. So if you look at this one, it's telling me if X is equal to two, my probability for X is equal to two is 0.324. Then if you go to the next one, it's telling me if X is equal to three, my probability is 0.185 and so on and so forth. So it's giving you the probability if you just click on each one of these bars. Everybody kind of okay with that? Okay, so say you don't want to look at the graph, say you want to find the probability. So if you want to find the probability of exactly one outcome, which this is, you use PDF. So PDF, all you have to do is you have to enter the probability that you're looking for. So for this one, what do we say X will equal to? And if you want, you can put it in the chat. True. Cool. Yeah, two. So you put two. And if you look right here, it'll give exactly the probability that we got, which is 0.324. And that's it. Any question? I got 0.324. All right. So I'm going to switch back to the notes and we're going to go over another problem. So for this one says a husband and wife want to have three kids. What are the probability of the couple having two girls? So for this one, how many kids do they want to have? Three. Three. So that means N is equal to three. Right. Everybody go that N is equal to three. Yes. All right. So up next, what we want to do, we want to figure out what is a success. Oops. And what's a failure? So you need the success is whatever probability they're looking for. That's what a success is equal to. If whatever they're not looking to, that's essentially a fail. So what are, what probability is it that we're trying to find? 
Of them having which gender? Girls. Cool, girl. So we're gonna say girls are a success. We're gonna say boys are failures. Everybody go with that? All right. So let's go ahead and find the probability of success. So let's find what P is equal to. So P is equal to what? So what's the probability of them having a girl the first, like in a singular event? Well, if you can't think about it, since there are only two options, it's either gonna be a boy or a girl. We're gonna say one. The probability of two or one half? Yeah, one half. Because one half, you always you find the probability of that one event occurring. So, or the other. Half. Yeah. All right. Lastly, what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna find what x is equal to. So, x is equal to however many success do they wanna have? So, in this case, of the three kids, how many do we want to be girls? Two. Two. So X is equal to two. All right. So this is what we're going to give to class cow. So we're going to say N is equal to three. We're going to say P is equal to one half. And then once we select PDF, we're going to select two. All right. Everybody good? What we're going to put in class cow? All right, so yeah. let me switch over to class cow. All right, so let me erase this. So you just remember for class cow, first go to stats, then go to distribution, then click on binomial distribution. You wanna click where it says here, and and we said was three, P was equal to point Five. Cool. All right, and we get a different color. Cool. All right, so for this one, you want to use PDF because anytime you find the probability of x is equal to one value, you always want to use PDF. So I'm going to use PDF. And what should I put for that value for x? x is equal to what? Two. So you do that. So we'll say, probability x is equal to two is equal to 0.375. And that's your final answer for this one. Any question I got 0 0.375? Yeah, um, what do we use the 0.5 from? The 0.5 come from the one half, because one half is 0.5. Okay, yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could put one half too. It should still give you the same answer. All right. Everybody good with that? All right, sweet. So up next, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and do the same problem, in, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the TI-83 or 84 for those people who do have a TI-83 or 84. So if you're using class calc, you can just totally just check out for a couple of minutes. All right, so if you are using a TI-83 or 84, what you wanna do, you wanna hit the second button. And the way I know the second button you hit it, if you look at it, it should change to an arrow pointing up. So then what you wanna do, you wanna click V-A-R-S. All right, so let me do that again in case you got lost. So you wanna hit the second button, which is the blue button. And then you want to hit V-A-R-S, which is near the clear button. So then all you have to do is find binomial distribution. So just click down and you should find something that says binomial PDF. So you use PDF when you want to find the probability of exactly when x is equal to only one number. So it has to be singular. So we're going to use binomial PDF. If you look at it, it's going to ask for trial. When it's asking for trial, it's asking you for n. So that's three. 
when it's asking you for P, well, that's P, which is 0.5. And when it's asking for the X value, well, it wants the X value, so give it two. So we go to paste, go to enter, and you get the exactly the same answer that we got when we use class cap. All right. Any question in regard to that one? All right then. So let's get on to the second part of that question. So here goes the second part of the question. So it says, now what are the probability of a couple having less than two girls? So my N is still equal to three, P is equal to one half. But now X, X is gonna equal to a different value. So if they wanna have less than two girls, how many girls can they have? One. Okay, is that the only way to have less than two girls? No, zero. Yeah, zero. So if you look right here, this one we have multiple X value. So since we have multiple X value, this is the case where you wanna use C, D, F. So if, if you look at this one, since this one, we only want an X to be two, that was singular, that was just one outcome. That what we said is PDF. But anytime you want multiple outcome, that's when you wanna use CDF. All right, everybody good so far on this one, why we're using CDF? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna transition back into class cloud. All right, so we'll do this anew. So we go to stats, we go to distribution, we go to binomial distribution, we tell it what n is, n is equal to three, p is equal to 0.5, and now we're gonna be using CDF. So if you look for CDF, it tell you what is the range. So it's telling us what is the lowest number we want, what is the highest number we want. So since we want it to be from zero to one, the lowest number, we're gonna say zero. The highest number we want is one. And also if you notice, if you look at the graph, the graph is telling us, if you look at only the blue part is shaded, that's the part that represents zero and one. Because if you look at one, zero, it's 0 0.125. If you look at one is 0.375. If you look at the answer, is adding up those two values to get the 0.50 or the 50%. So I'll say probably X is equal to zero or one is equal to 0.5 or 50%. All right. Any question on how to do that? So I'm gonna show you for the TI-83 how to do that. And then we'll move on to the next problem. So for the TI-83, what you wanna do, go to second, go to VARS, and go to binomial CDF. So once you're in binomial CDF, you select trial, which trial those three. P is equal to 0.50. So for the X value, for the binomial CDF, it always wants the highest X value that you want, and then it'll give you all of the X value all the way down to zero. So for the TI-84, it's a little bit more limited, because the cost cost, you could set whatever the lower bound, the upper bound is, but for the binomial, for the TI-83, you can only put in the highest value, and it's always gonna give you all the way down to zero. So for this one, the highest value was one. So you press one and then you press paste. 
So if you look at it, we get exactly the same answer of 0.50 or 50%. All right. uh, any question in regard to the TI 83 or 84? All right, so let me go back to my notes. So let's go on and do a next problem. Right. So for the next problem, it says a quiz for a psychology class consists of 10 questions. The question are multiple choice with five possible answer each with only one correct answer. If the student did not study and is guessing for all 10 questions, and then what we want to do, we want to find the following. Find the following. Yeah. All right, so let's see if we can find what is N? What is the probability of success? Well, before we find this, let's say what is a success? Find the probability of success. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, the experiment is a question on this quiz. So for this one, how many total questions do we have on the quiz? 10. Ten. So n is equal to ten. All right. So for this one, we're gonna try to figure out what is the success. So to figure out what the success is, we want to find what is it that we're trying to find the probability for. Are we trying to find the probability of them getting a correct answer, or are we trying to find the probability of them getting an incorrect answer? So to figure that out, what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at part A. And we're going to see what it is that we're trying to find the probability for. If you look at part A, it says, what is the probability of that student getting one correct answer? So the success will be if they get a correct answer. So that's what we're going to consider success. A success is if they get a correct answer. A failure will be if they get the incorrect answer. So up next, we're going to find P. So P, it could be, what is the probability of success? So what is the probability if they're guessing in one of these problems? What's the probability that they guess it correct? So if you kind of look at it, they tell you this is a multiple choice quiz. So for each question, how many possible answers do they say they have? Five. Five. So that means they have an A, they have a B, they have a C, they have a D, and lastly, they have an E. But of those five, how many of those are going to be correct? One. One. So let's say C is correct. So would it be one out of five, the probability? One out of five? Yeah, perfect. It will be one out of five. Or you can just write out the decimal, point twenty. So you get one out of five because they have five options, but only one of those five options are considered correct. All right. Everybody good on P is equal to one over five or 0.20. Okay, so let's go ahead and now let's do part A. So it says, what are the probability of a student getting one correct answer? So for this one, what do we want x to equal to? Do we want x to equal to like 10? Do we want it equal to zero? What do we want it to equal to? Because how many correct answers do we want? One. One. So you say x is equal to one. So for this one, would I want to use PDF? Or do I want to use CDF? PDF. Yeah, you want to use PDF. All right. 
Everybody go so far on n is equal to 10, p is equal to 1 fifth, and we're doing x is equal to 1, and we're using p d f. All right, so let's go ahead and just switch over and let's do that on class calc. So let me erase this. Let's do a brand new one. So we're going to go to stats. We're going to go to distribution. We're going to go binomial distribution. So n is 10. P is 0.20. All right, so if you look at our drawing, we could technically just go right here and get the answer. We could get that the answer is 0.268. But if you want to click on PDF, change it to a one, you get that exact same answer of 0.2684. So probability that X is equal to one is 0.2684. And that's your answer for part A. Any question in regard to part A? All right, let's do part B. So for part B, it says, what is the probability of that student getting a passing gray? So passing gray is 70% or more. So what does my X has to be if I want to get a passing gray? Seven. Okay. But is that the only way I can get a passing gray? So like seven is the only passing gray, everything else is not passing? Well, well like seven, like swap. <laughs> seven, seven and nine, nine, ten. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so we want to find seven, eight, nine, and 10. So let's go ahead and find that. So we're going to find this probability right now. Excuse so, me, so, um, so P stays the same, right? Yeah, P stay the same. P and N will always be the same for a singular problem. The only thing that's changing is your X value. Oh, okay. Okay. For this problem that we're about to do, when we go to class calc, do I want to use PDF or do I want to use CDF? CDF. Yeah, so for this one, we're going to want to use CDF. Because since we have a range, you want to use CDF. So let me go over and switch over to class calc. If you do have a TID384 for you, um, you're going to have to do like one extra step just because some of the limitation on the TID3, but I'll show you how to do it in a bit. Okay, so first thing we're going to go, stats. We're going to go to distribution, and we're going to go over to binomial distribution. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put N, which is 10. We're gonna put P, which is 0.20. All right, cool, we got gray this time. So now what we wanna do, we're gonna select CDF. And now we're gonna give it the range. So we're gonna tell them, hey, the lowest we want it to be is seven. The highest we want it to be is all the way to 10. And if you actually look at the drawing, you can see how like seven, eight, and nine, and 10 are highlighted. So if you kind of look at the probability, each one of those probability are pretty low. So if you look at our final answer, we should get, point zero 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 eight six. And that's your final answer for that problem. Everybody go with that final answer. All right. 
So I'm going to show you how to do this with the TI-83 for the people who have the TI-83. So the thing about the TI-83, the TI-83 always want to get it. You can't tell it the range that you want. So you can't tell it 7 through 10. But what you could do, what the um, binomial CDF does do, it gives you the probability that you give it and anything all the way down to zero. So for this problem, if you're doing the TI-83, what you have to do, you have to find the complement. So the complement of passing is not passing. So if I want to find the probability of somebody not passing, that means we're going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the score that somebody could get if they're not passing. So what we're going to first do, we're going to find the probability of somebody not passing. And with the TI-83, it always wants the X value that's the biggest. Because that way, you know, it going to get that biggest value and everything below it. So the biggest value that we have is 6. So when we do the TI-83, we're going to put 6 as our biggest value. So I'm going to switch over to the TI-83. All right, so let me turn this on. So we're going to go right here where it says second, bars. And we're going to go right here where it says binomial CDF. So my N in this case is 10. My P is point. 20 and x x will be equal to 6 because 6 was the highest value of all the x value that we got so we go to paste cool. all right so this is the probability of not passing but the thing is, if we want the probability of passing so we're gonna have to do 1 minus this probability of not passing so we'll say point nine 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 one three five six and if you look we get eight point six four four e to the negative four so the e to the negative four is a scientific notation so what the e to the negative four mean you get the dot and you move it four faces to the left so you get this dot, you move it one time, two times, three times, four times, and then you put a dot and you put 0 0.000864, and that's exactly what we got with the class cow. So if you are using a TI-83, you kind of have to just remember the limitation that it will give you the probability all the way down to zero. All right, but that's it for the last prompt. Any questions for the last prompt? All right, so let's do this next problem, and then we're going to go on to a new, well, not a new topic, but a new idea. So for this one, so the number of unmarkable tomato has approximately the binomial di distribution with n equal 10 and p is equal to 0.11. So for a, it says find the probability that a sample contains no more than one unmarkable tomato. So we already know n is 10. We already know p is 0.11. So if it says no more than one unmarkable tomato, what's my x value? Oops. So what's my x value? One. One. And what else? Zero. And zero. Yeah, so we get x is equal to zero, x is equal to one. So for this one, uh, which function do we want to use, PDF or CDF? 
CDF. Yeah, so we're gonna do CDF. So now what I want you to do on your calculator, do CDF for this one. And then once you do it, enter your answer into the chat. If you don't want anybody to see, you just privately um, send me the answer. So that way I can see if you did it correct or not. Everybody's on it, so yeah, point six nine seven two. All right, and that's your answer for A. Any question in regard to A? All right, so let's do B. So for B, it says find the probability that the sample contain at least one unmarketable tomato. So when it says at least one. That means one is the lowest value, but it could be two, three, four, five, six, to ten. seven, eight, nine, yeah, all the way up to ten. So for this one, what you want to do, you want to use binomial CDF again. If you are using the TI-83 or 84 for you, you want to use binomial PDF. Because if you look at it, x is 1 through 10. So what you want to do, you find x is equal to 0, and then do 1 minus this probability. So if you are using binomial, well, sorry, if you are using the TI-83 or 84, you want to use the binomial PDF. You find the probability that x is equal to 0, and then you do 1 minus that probability. If you're using class cal, Pretty much just do CDF for this one. And once you get your answer, you put it in the, in the chat. All right, perfect. So you get probably x is greater than or equal to 1, which is equal to 0. 0.6881. Well, thank me. You could get that 1. You could round it up to 2. Oh, well. So, all right. So that's it for B. Any question in regard to B? So right now we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and move on to finding the mean and standard deviation. So for the mean and standard deviation, these are the two formula we're gonna be using. So for the mean, to calculate the mean, we're gonna do n times p. So we're gonna get how many trials we have, and we're gonna multiply it by the probability of success. So once you find this, they could give you your expected success. So they're going to tell you how many success should you expect. So they're going to tell you, hey, we should expect five success or we should expect two success. They're going to tell you how many successes should you expect. The standard deviation, you're going to tell you the spread. So I'm gonna tell you like how spread out from the mean it's gonna be. So I'm gonna kind of tell you like from the mean it should be spread out by one correct answer or two correct answers. So it could tell us like how far away from the mean we could actually go. Right. Uh, any questions so far for those two formulas? All right, so let's do this next prompt. So it says a quiz for psychology class consists of 10 questions. The question are multiple choice with four possible answer each. A student randomly gets on 10 questions. 
So for this one, once again, you have 10 questions. But for this one, they change the multiple choice question. Because instead of having five possible answers, how many possible answers do they now have? One out of four. Yeah, four. So what we want to do, we're going to say there's one correct answer out of the four. Any questions so far? We got n is equal to 10, p is equal to 1 over 4. And instead of using 1 over 4, let's use 0.25. All right. So if p is equal to 1 over 4 or 0.25, what would q equal to? If you want, you get it. What was that again? 0.75. Yeah, 0.75. So we'll say 3 over 4 or 0.75. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do A. So for A, it says find the mean and write a sentence describing what does it represent. So first, we're going to find the mean. So for the mean, we're going to say N, which is 10. And we're going to multiply it by P, which is 0.25. So for this one, if you do 10 times 0.25, you should get 2.5. And we're done. So now we're going to do, we're going to do the explanation. Or so for this one, we're going to say 2.5. Represent how many question question we should expect a person to get correct. If they are guessing. So we'll say 2.5 represent how many questions we should expect a person to get correct if they are guessing. Right. And that's it for A. Any question in regard to A? All right, so let's do B. So B is standard deviation. So for standard deviation, oops, we're gonna get square root of N, which is 10 times P, which is 0.25 times Q, which is 0.75. So let me work that out. So if you multiply that all out, you should get 1.369, or we could say 1.37. So then for the, what does it represent? We'll say, 1.37 represent how spread out from the mean we should expect to go. So kind of you think about it, the standard division is telling us like not everybody is going to score 2.5 question correct. The standard division is telling us like how far away from the mean we should go. So it's telling us like, hey, some people might get three questions correct or some people might get only one question correct out of the 10. So the standard division is telling us like how spread out away from the mean we should expect it to go. 
All right, but that's it for B. Any question for B? All right, so let's see. All right. So let's do this final problem and then we're done for today. So for this final problem is essentially is it gonna be a question that go over pretty much everything we went over today. So for this one, it says Stephen Curry make 42% of his three points of 10. If Stephen Curry shoot 10 three pointer in a game, what are the probability he makes? All right. So how many three pointers does he shoot? 10. 10, perfect. What's the probability he make a singular three point shot? Forty-two percent. Yeah, forty-two percent. Perfect. All right, so let's go to A. So A, we want to find the probability he make exactly six of the ten three-point shots. So that means X is equal to what? Six. Perfect. You're on a roll, Imani. So we get X is equal to six. So for this one, would this be CDF or PDF? PDF. Yeah, PDF. So we want to find a singular event. So we'll say PDF. All right. So let's go over it and find this value. So I'll do this with class cow. So up next, we're going to go ahead and do this. So we'll say stats. We'll say distribution. We'll say binomial distribution. We already know he shoot 10 shots. Oops, no. We already know the probability he make a singular shot is 0.42. And then we're gonna say PDF, can we want him to make exactly six shots? So if you look at it, this is 13% chance he makes six shots. So the probability he makes six shots is 0.1304 or pretty much just 13%. And that's your answer for A. Any question in regard to how we did A? All right, so let's do B. So let me switch over to my notes. Right. So if you look at part B, it says, um, we want to find the probability he make at least six of the 10 three points of 10. So for this one, what's my X? What is it like one, two, three, four, five, six? Well, for this, you want to be careful because it says at least six. So that means the six is our six minimum. Oh, okay. So if six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. So since we're finding six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, will this be a PDF or a CDF? A CDF. Yeah, this should be a CDF. So we're gonna go ahead and find the probability x is equal to all of this. If you are using the TI eighty three or eighty four, what you want to do, you want to find the probability x is equal to zero, one, two, three four, five, and you want to subtract that by one. So go ahead and try doing this next problem. Well, here, let me do it in class, Kyle. So I'm gonna switch this over to CDF. So for CDF, we're gonna put the lowest value is six. The highest value will be 10. So if you look at what we got, we got 0.2016. So we got 0.2016. And that'll be the if for that last prong. Any question in regards to that last prong for part B? 
So let's do part C and then that'll be it for today. Right. So for part two, it says, how many three-pointers should we expect Stephen Curry to make? Explain the result. So if you look right here, it says expect. So expect is the other word saying find the mean or find mu. So what we have to do, we have to get find the average. So to find the average, what we have to do, we have to get n and multiply by p. So we already know n is equal to 10. And we know p is equal to 0.42. So if we do 10 times 0.42, you get 4.2. So the 4.2 means if Steph Curry shoot. And three pointer. We should expect him to make four of them. And that'll be it for that last part. So we say if Steph Curry shoot um, 10 three pointer, we should expect him to make four of them. All right. All right. Uh, any question in regard to the last part? All right. So if you look at it, that's pretty much it for today's lecture notes. So let me stop the recording.